Hey guys, here we are with another tutorial for O17, and this time we are going to talk about the height map tool. If you're not familiar with the concept of a height map, it basically is a landscape mesh generated from a grayscale image that defines the height of each vertex with the brightness of the associated pixel. If you just google height map, you will be given many grayscale images that we can use. And I'll just pick a random one and let's see how it works. First thing, we click on this icon to bring up the grids panel. By adjusting the opacity we can show the default mesh which is just a flat grid, but already super useful to place things in space. We can change the color of the grid from black to white for a better contrast on dark scenes, and we can also adjust the camera distance from the ground. To hide the grid, just lower the opacity to zero. The other options only make sense when a height map is present, so let's click open and grab one. As you can see, I've got a few ones that will have different results. I like this one because it has sharp edges. And now the mesh has been generated, and we can start tweaking the other parameters. The resolution sets the multiplier to the number of vertices in the mesh. So the higher the resolution, the smoother the mesh will look. But it will also take a little longer to render, so use it wisely. Shading just changes the way it is rendered, and when it's set to solid, you can change the light by tweaking the light yo and pitch to set its location. With ambient, you can also increase the overall brightness of the mesh. Height is pretty simple, and changes the height of the terrain. If you want to move the camera location, you can do it by dragging the little cursor in the map and find the best location. The last three parameters are related to the ray tracer. The ray tracer is a component that renders a more realistic light with soft shadows based on the location of the light. The light position is where its icon is located in the scene. Text res is the resolution of the texture for the light map and sampled is the number of rays for each pixel of the texture. The higher these values, the longer it will take to render. Let's now push the render button and see what happens. As you can see, it's not super smooth right now, but you can achieve a better result with tweaking the values of the parameters. But anyway, this mesh is just for reference, so it doesn't need to be photorealistic. The last parameter is the radius of the light source, and you can use this to set how soft or sharp the shadow will look. At the end of the tweaking process, you can get rid of the wireframe and commit the mesh to the selected layer, so you can start painting on top of it. And if you want to get back to the flat grid, just clear the current height map. This is all for now, and as always, thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial!